Now before we start, the products that I use are my own personal preference and is typically stuff that I have found to work well for me. You do not have to use the same detailing products that I do. I encourage you to choose products that you prefer. Hello everybody, Six Speed Dakota here and today I'm doing a several part series on how to wash and detail your car properly. And I'm doing it on my Hyundai Santa Fe which is made famous from my Hyundai oil change video and also my rear differential oil change video. It's my mom's car and it's kind of a Mother's Day present. So anyway, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make this into one big series with many little parts or a series of many videos. Uh, I guess we'll see how long it gets and how it turns out. So anyway, we're going to start with the washing phase. Seems kind of obvious. So, let's start with how to wash your car correctly. Now, stuff you're going to need. Now, oops. Now, of course, you're going to need your buckets. Now, a lot of people know what the two bucket system is, but believe it or not, a lot of first timers, including my mother who washes her car every so often, does not know about the two bucket system. So, what we have is we have a bucket for wash, we have a bucket for rinse. Now I like to use a three bucket system where we have a wheel bucket as well. Now of course you're going to need stuff to clean the car with. In this case I have a wash mitt. It's kind of soggy, I just washed my truck yesterday. And in the case that we have bug, bugs and crap on the uh, front end, we have a bug sponge. Nothing in the rinse bucket of course. I have a hard bristle tire brush for cleaning the tires. And that's how I like to clean the white walls, the white lettering on the tires. We have a wheel brush, and I have a small microfiber cloth that's easy to get into intricate areas that this guy can. And that's for the wheels. Now, as for wheel cleaner, we have I have this All Wheel Care by No Touch, which is this which is the same kind of tire shine I get at Costco. It comes in a this comes in a pack of three tire shines, which I really like. It's non-acidic. And it works all right. Then we have something like this, which I got in a pack of Turtle Wax products for my birthday a few years ago. But this, if we look closely, is an acidic wheel cleaner. I'm not going to go through it all, but you got to be really careful with this stuff because it will actually, it could actually etch a polished wheel, or it could ruin the paint on a wheel if you're not careful. So read the directions before you go ahead and use this, and don't leave it sit on a wheel for too long. I don't like using this stuff. Except for when I got caked on brake dust, it powers through it quite well. Usually I just use this. I'm almost out of it. As for bug and tar remover, this stuff seems to soften insects and bugs and tar and stuff like that. Tree sap as well as it says right there. And this stuff will tend to strip wax. It says safer clear coats and won't strip wax, but it is quite aggressive, especially when you use it with the bug sponge. So be prepared for that. And of course, one of the last things we have is we have soap. Now, for detailing products, again, to each his own, you can use whatever you feel like. In this case, I use Meguiar's Gold Class. It's a good soap. I used to use Armor All Wash and Wax. I got a big, gigantic thing from Costco one time. But this stuff works really well, nice and thick. It's got a nice smell to it. Um, this will actually protect the wax and the paint. So we also have dish soap, which I have in a honey container here. Now dish soap is very harsh, or well, harsh, it's quite aggressive. So what it'll actually do is it'll actually strip wax off your paint, which you gotta be careful of. Now in this case, because I'm gonna be polishing and claying and everything else, we can use dish soap because we want to strip the wax off and get it down to nothing. Now if I wasn't claying and polishing, I'd just wash it with this stuff and we continue on. So again, don't use dish soap unless you're actually going to go through every single step and do it. Now you don't have to polish or anything like that. You can clay and then wax. But if you're going to strip it down to the paint and re-wax it, you're going to want to use dish soap. because. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the wheels. Now, again, if we use an acidic wheel cleaner, we definitely want to follow the instructions. Which means we don't want to do it when it's hot. 
we want to let it soak for about 30 seconds when we generously spray the wheel. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to wet it down. Generous, generously spray the wheel. That might be a little overkill. And let it sit for about 30 seconds. Now what's really nice about this is on my truck, because I have white lettering on the tires, I can use, I can usually clean that with my wheel brush or tire brush and using some of this marine spray nine, it's really strong stuff. So what I do is I, just for demonstration, I spray it on the wheel, the tire, and I'll scrub the tire. And it cleans any kind of brake dust or anything off of the white lettering. So if you got white walls, this stuff works really, really well. Okay, so before we let that stuff sit on there for too long, we're gonna get our wheel brush. And go in there, we're gonna scrub our wheels. Get to get it behind there a little bit. Nice bead of the wheel here. it off and look at the results. If you miss a spot, just dip your brush back in the soap again and just keep scrubbing. These wheels haven't been cared for in a while, so they're a little dirty. Don't forget to get in behind the spokes. Anywhere where somebody can see, you're going to want to really clean. This brush isn't great for getting in there. And since I don't have a lug nut brush, I just like to use that microfiber cloth. I've been using this on wheels for years. I mean it works fine. It's nice for cleaning the face of the wheels as well. Now we take our tire brush, dip it in our soapy water. And wash the tire. And when we spray it off, it should be all nice and clean. Just like that. Now unfortunately I have four more to do. So we got our wash, rinse, and wheel buckets ready. First thing we're going to do is we're going to wet the car down. Now you don't need a real hard spray. In fact, I generally don't recommend it. Just a nice soft shower like this. All right, so if you have bugs and tar on the front of it, now is the time to use your bug and tar remover. Now for those of you who like to do burnouts, you can also put this on the inside of the fenders and it'll help clean it clean all the tire stuff off so after letting it sit for a little bit take our bug and tar sponge and clean it off
Now instead of rinsing this sponge, I actually like to spray this one out because I'd rather not get the bug and tar remover in the rinse bucket or in the wash bucket. Anyway, once you're done that, close off the bug and tar remover. And now we shall start our wash. Don't ever put your sponge or anything on the ground. Always put them in something where they're not going to touch the ground. So you don't want the dirt from the ground on your car. So, got my wash mitt, we're going to put it on. We dip it in our wash bucket. Now that's full of soap. No real rocket science to this. Nice thing with the wash mitts, once one side's dirty, you flip it around and then you use the other side. Make sure you get everything. Now the whole principle of this two bucket system is that I'm going to rinse my wash mitt off in the rinse bucket, squeeze it out, and then dunk it back in the paint soap bucket. And what this will do is this will prevent any grit from the car getting into my, into my wash bucket. We're going to continue moving on here. quick tip before we move on to the wheels, and that's if we're using the wash mitt in and around these fender wells and they get all dirty, make sure that you hose it off with the hose first before dropping it back in your rinse bucket again. That'll prevent you from getting all the contaminants, all the dirt and stuff back onto the paint. Right now I'm sure you pretty much know how to wash a car and you know the general rules apply start at the top work your way down the only reason why I'm doing the front is kind of for demonstration purposes only um, one other thing is that don't ever let the soap dry on or you get these kind of scaly spots going on make sure that you wash it regularly or wet or like make sure it's rinsed regularly also with a really nice day like we have today or sort of nice day it's starting to cloud a little bit make sure that you uh, wet the car. Do never wash over a dry section of the car or you could scuff the car up real bad. So I'm going to continue washing here and once we're done washing we'll move on to the next step which is going to be claying. Alright so the next thing we're going to move on to is the clay bar. I have the mother's clay bar kit here. Now it comes with a bottle of their Showtime detailer, quick detailer, a microfiber cloth, We'll sit somewhere else other than the ground. And two clay bars. I've already used them, my cousin and I, together. So, a little stuck together. Supposed to have two in there, but the fact that I was trying to be more effective, we used both at the same time. So what I did is I sprayed a couple shots of quick detailer in here, which quickly clearly means that I'm going to need to put a little bit more. 
in that baggie. So anyhow, we get the clay bar. The trick is when you knead the clay, you want to flatten it out to kind of a pancake. Kind of like this. Now there are two ways of using this clay bar. Either you can spray the Showtime detailer onto the surface of the car and then run the clay over top, or you can do what I'm going to do and use the soapy water. So let's go out there and do it. Okay, so just before we start, it is imperative that the surface of the car be absolutely clean. No contaminants at all. So now what we're going to do, is we're going to dip our wash mitt in the soapy water. We're going to drool the soapy water over top of the car like that. So now we're going to take our clay bar, we're just going to run it over the surface. And you'll actually feel the roughness of the surface when you move the clay bar back and forth. As soon as you feel that roughness go away, it should glide nice and smoothly. You can almost hear it. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. It almost has like a gritty sound when you're doing this. But then when the clay picks it all up, gets a lot quieter. Now the clay is actually picking up the dirt so every so often what we have to do is just take it and we need the clay bar over and over again. Now I'm going to see if I can get you a closer shot. So we're going to spread the soapy water over. Now if we listen really really closely I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not, but if you're doing this yourself, you will definitely hear it and you'll definitely feel it. So this won't take too, too long, but you have to do this on every painted surface of the car. This won't take a whole chunk of time, but you definitely have to be really, really thorough with it. But the results are definitely worth it, and it definitely takes some of the scrape marks and stuff out. Or at least it cleans them out so it makes it easier for us to compound. Now I'm going to come back when we're done the claying. Now, remember that every so often, spray the car off, especially when it's out in the sunlight like this. So we do not want the soap to dry on. There we go. We'll just keep continuing this process until the entire car is finished. Alright, now as you can see I moved us into the garage because the weather's starting to get really windy and nasty out there. Now we're going to dry the car. As you see it's already pretty much dry, but... Anyhow, there's some parts that aren't. So, in order to dry, get yourself a good waffle weave drying towel. As you can see it's got these little waffle patterns on it. And the way we dry is we take the cloth, drape it over top, and just gently pull it across. Gently wipe the, the surface. We don't want to... It's a paint chip right there. We don't want to give it any really hard pressure. So we don't want to like really grind it like that. We just want to just take it and just gently wipe it over top. Now, of course on vertical surfaces you're going to have to use your hand. Also when you get down to the bottom, don't let the bottom of the towel touch the ground because then you pick up the grit from the ground. So, oops. Now once we're done drying we're going to move on to compounding and polishing. Okay, so now that I got the car dry, if we look at the paint, I don't know if you can see it that well, but if I bring the light near it, you notice how heavily oxidized and how scarred it is. Look at how bad that scratching is. So some of the stuff we can't bring out just by polish and compounding alone. Some of it will have to be 
like this here will have to be wet sanded, but I don't really feel like doing that today. I don't, don't want to be here all night since I have to work in the morning. So essentially what we're going to do is we are going to compound and polish the car. All right, so now we're going to compound and polish the car. Now, it depends whether you want to compound or polish your car. You don't have to. If you're content with it, go ahead and put a coat of wax on it. If you see some light scratching, like little circular scratches or little minor swirls, then you may want to use a little bit of polish. Now, if you see some really heavy swirling, hazing, some deeper scratches, well, then you're going to want to compound the car. Now, if you've got a bunch of scuffs and deep scratches, compounding probably won't help it completely. You'd probably have to wet sand. I'm not going to get into that today. Um, so, anyway... There's two options if you want to compound and polish, you can do it by hand. So you use one of these guys, which is a terry cloth applicator. You can get microfiber applicator, whatever, same thing really. It just applies whatever you're putting on. Now, obviously you're going to need compounds because you're not just going to rub with this. Or what you can do is use a buffing machine. This is an orbital buffer or polisher. So it just free spins, but it oscillates. I'm trying to hold the, the compounds. It oscillates like this, or orbits, and then it just spins naturally as it orbits. Now you can have a dual action polisher, which spins and orbits, or you can get a full rotary that spins. Rotaries are the most aggressive, they do the best job, but they definitely are very powerful and can burn through paint cause bad swirl and hazing and just all kinds of nasty things if you don't know what you're doing. It's not for the inexperienced. It's definitely not. Dual action, again, is a little less powerful in rotary but far more powerful than an orbital. And the dual action is nice because it's got a lot more power and it's quite a bit more, it's, it's quite a, it's a lot more power than the orbital and quite a bit safer than the rotary. Now the orbital one is nice because this thing I got for 20 bucks on eBay. It's not that powerful, but unless you're doing something ridiculous with it, there's no way you're gonna burn through the paint or harm it. Unless you're like really forcing it in there or holding it in one spot at one time. If you really force it down, all it's gonna do is just shake and vibrate. It's not even gonna do anything. So anyhow, we're not gonna buff with just a bare pad that'll put scratches in the paint. So what we need to do is we need to use compounds or polishes or whatever. This is turtle wax rubbing compound. This is, I got this a while ago. This stuff, and I'm actually shooting this after I've polished the car. Uh, I was a little skeptical about this because I had bought the rubbing compound paste, which this stuff is just garbage. I used it once, as you can see it's totally full, and it left scratches in the paint and whatnot. It's, it's terrible. So, if you use it on something, maybe for like polishing metal, I don't know. I just feel like throwing it out, but I don't have the heart to do so because it's full. Anyhow, this stuff is the liquid stuff, and I was really skeptical after that one. But this stuff's actually really, really good. It definitely removed all the oxidation and the haze from the car. And then the little bit of haze that this guy left, because this is like a, think of it as like a sandpaper. This is like a liquid sandpaper. This is a little bit more aggressive then the polish. Now this is turtle wax polishing compound. And the polishing compound removes any kind of scratches or anything this leaves or in any kind of those love marks, those little tiny spider webby kind of scratches if you look at it directly in the light. So right now I've finished polishing and compounding the car but I just thought I'd give you the rundown on that. Anyway, so I'm gonna get back to polishing and or at least what you're going to see is polishing and compounding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start by compounding this car. Now, there's a variety of different ways you can do it. You can do it by hand using an applicator pad, or you can go the power route like me. Now this is an orbital polisher. All it does is just well, orbit, and it doesn't have that much power. So yeah, it won't probably won't get all the crap out of there, but let's be honest, this guy's a hell of a lot safer than one of those big rotary ones that spins at ridiculous velocities. 
those will definitely screw your paint up very, very quickly. I recommend something basic like this. I bought it for 20 bucks off of eBay. So, I mean, you can't really complain about that. So, first thing I'm going to do, so you see I got my wool bonnet on here, which it did come with a terry cloth bonnet, but I don't want to use that because terry cloth is a little bit aggressive, especially with a black paint finish like this, and black shows everything. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of quick detailer and just give the surface a little bit of a mist. There we go. Rub it in a little bit. Hmm, that Showtime detailer smells like cinnamon actually. It smells really nice. Anyhow, make sure you have plenty of microfiber towels too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our rubbing compound. That's probably a little hard to see. I'm going to step back. We're just going to apply a little bit to the surface. You're going to need a little bit more for your first application. because the pad is completely dry. All right, so here's how we do it. So now that I got the uh, rubbing compound loaded up on the pad, we're going to take it and dab our area a few times. The cord over my shoulder. Just like this. Now we're going to buff. And apply a medium pressure, not too hard. Notice how the pad is spinning as we move the polisher back and forth. This is what we want. If you're pushing so hard that all the pad's doing is vibrating back and forth, then, well, you're putting way too much pressure on you. Be careful on curves like this. You can easily buff through the clear coat. Work it back and forth. Don't stay in one spot for too long. But when it starts to look a little bit dry coming up, just we're going to stop. And never put the bottle with the face down on the ground. Because again, this is on the paint surface of the car. Now we're going to wipe it off. Again, being quite careful here. Okay, so sometimes this may require a second application. So as you can see, I've dripped some polish on there. So again, what we're going to do, put the cord over my shoulder and just spread the polish around and you don't want to stay in one spot for too long. Now you have to work in sections. So once the polish is spread, I'm going to work methodically on it. Notice how the buffing pad is spinning. That's exactly what we want. Now this thing doesn't have a whole ton of power, so it really won't get you into too much trouble. That should pretty much do it. So once we notice that the polish is starting to wear a little bit thin, it almost looks like one of those old 3D rulers or something where you look into it. Almost like a, almost like a shower door, how it's kind of got that, that look to it where you can't quite see through it. We're going to take our cloth and we're just going to wipe off the polish, or the compound, sorry. Now again, we don't want to go real hard on this. Because this stuff is like liquid sandpaper. It's, it's actually gritty. You can actually feel it. There's still some scratches and those won't come out without wet sanding, but all the heavy swirling and oxidation is all gone. Now, 
Now, if you have a DA or a rotary polisher, chances are this will get some of the heavier scratches out. But the really deep ones will only be taken up by wet sanding. Which again, I gotta work tomorrow, I don't want to be here all night. There we go. Now you may notice that you have a little bit of a haze in it almost. Although this one actually doesn't look too bad. That's what you should have. Take you out of the tripod here. Now if we look and I grab my trouble light. Notice we still have some marks. I mean, it's not going to be perfect. We do have a little bit of a haze in it. But compared to what it looked like before, this is before. Notice all these heavy scratches in here. Come over here, and they are quite a bit lighter. Now again, because this polisher isn't so powerful, you're not going to get everything out. Some of these little, some of this stuff is just kind of dust because it is a black car. But I mean, if you look up here, there is not a single mark. I just haven't cleaned this stuff well enough. But if we go over here, notice how beaten up and oxidized and scratched this is, and look over here how well you can see the light in it. So again, some of this haze will be taken out by the, as you can see there, will be taken out by the polish. So that's about it. Now it's just time to compound the entire car. And uh, we'll come back when it's time to go to the next step. All right, so now we're done compounding. I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't look too bad. There's a few spots here and there, partially because I had it outside to uh, compound the roof, but I actually polished the roof while I was out there. So, you see the reflection nicely though. I mean, it's a little bit hazy right now. I don't know if you're able to see that too well. It's a little hazy, but we still have to polish. Now, a couple of tips if you have to compound your car, the compound is a little heavier than the polish. So if you have a stuck on spot of compound, hit it with a little bit of quick detailer and just wipe it off. And that'll soften it up nicely. So anyway, I got the entire car compounded, which took me a couple hours. And we have to do the same thing with polish. So as you can see, I put a really hairy looking pad on here. It's kind of falling apart, so this will probably be covered in this white wool hair. So again, what we do is we're going to take this and we're just going to put a few dots of the polish on it. Now you have to put quite a bit more on to start. And then just kind of rub it in. Because this pad is dry and it's, the wool actually soaks up a lot of the polish. Another thing is... Ugh. Spray a couple of shots of quick detailer. I'm trying to be behind the camera here. Spray a couple shots of quick detailer on the pad in order to create some lubrication. And now we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So I can get the cord out of the way. Now, first thing I'm going to do is put the cord over my shoulder. I'm going to dab the polish to spread it around because if you just start it up, it'll sling everywhere. Pretty much the same technique except the Cousin It pad sheds a little bit. Again, not too much pressure. Keep at a steady pace, but don't move too quickly. But you don't want to move too slowly either. If you move really slowly, you could swirl the paint up pretty badly. Now this pad's pretty soft. And again, this buffer doesn't have a whole ton of power. But basically you want to apply enough pressure so that the pad is spinning the way it is. If it spins too fast, it could, the pad could fly off. And if it doesn't spin at all, it means that you're putting too much pressure, just like I just did. Now I only did it for a second, and this thing's not that powerful, so it's not going to burn through the paint. At least that fast, anyway. So what we're going to do 
We're going to take our one cloth that's got a little bit more wetness to it. Just going to give it a quick wipe. Actually, it's not shedding as much as it was on the roof, which probably means that it's done shedding for a little bit. It was brand new. I just bought it today. The pad, anyway. Now, again, nice soft touch. Do not really put a lot of force into it. Now again, with an orbital polisher like that, don't expect it to work miracles again. But it's definitely deepened the gloss in the paint that just wasn't there because it wasn't very well taken care of. There we go. That should do it. Oh, I can really see my reflection in the paint now. So if I turn this light back on. And we look directly at it. Perfectly clear reflection. Run like here. It's kind of hard to tell from side to side, but over here I can see a little bit of a haze. Especially if you look in the light. But over here is nice and let me get the trouble light and we'll take a look. All right, so if we look in the paint here, there are a few scratches again. Don't expect an orbital polisher to work miracles. These would have to be probably wet sanded out or at least heavily rotary buffed. Whereas over here, it's a little bit dirty from being outside. But we still got a little bit of a haze over here. And then here it's, well, there's a scratch there, but again, this polisher isn't that powerful. In fact, it really does next to nothing other than kind of bring out the gloss and the paint. So don't hate on me if it's not perfect. Again, I'm not spending all day on it, and I'm not spending several hundred dollars on a rotary or, on a, rotary or a dual action polisher. So it's about a thousand times better than it was, that's for sure. Anyway, I'm going to finish polishing the car and we're going to move on to waxing. So I'm going to be here for about another hour to an hour and a half.